The LA Chargers make a bizarre move, and we're going to talk all about it. If you're new to the channel, we're Detroit Lions fans, but we have this channel all about the LA Chargers to give you an unbiased look into the Chargers. Jim Harbaugh can't really wait to see what happens there. We're in Michigan, so we're big Michigan fans, and so we know a lot about Jim Harbaugh. And this offseason has been interesting. We knew it would be just because of the cap situation. Really good veteran guys that are getting older that are really big inflated numbers. They had to get under the cap. And then what were they going to do? I thought that the Chargers were going to just kind of hit the reset button. New regime, new new coach, uh, new GM. Like, let's just hit the reset button and draft well and have a lot of money next year and see kind of where we get. Instead, the Chargers have chosen to go a different route, and let's talk about it, why this is a little weird, in my opinion. And, and you let me know in the comments, Chargers fans, and if, if you're new to the channel, we, we've had a lot of fun. Um, we started this channel just like a couple weeks ago and really has, has had a lot of fun with it, asking you guys questions, comments. So um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. But here it is. Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack have restructured their contracts. And so in doing that, it took a lot of work, last minute, 11th hour type of stuff to get under the cap, but they keep Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack. So in, in one way, it's it's kind of nice. You keep your good players. In another way, it just felt like it was time to reboot the franchise. And so it's like, yeah, all right. Because if you keep those guys, you get under the cap, but you're still tight. And so you can't make other moves that you would like to. So instead of being able to release Joey Bosa or Mac or trade them, you are going to keep them. And instead of getting rid of them and, and signing a, some younger, maybe some different defensive ends or defensive tackles or some corner help or offensive line help, the Chargers really haven't done a whole lot. So Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack, let's look at the positive side. You get Joey Bosa, hopefully he can stay healthy. He's a great player if he can stay healthy, but he hasn't been able to. He's he's played in, he's missed 25 games in the last four seasons. In the last two has really been quite a bit. Um, so it's like, I right, did need you out there. Khalil Mack, great season, hasn't missed any games as a charger, but he's also 33 years old. I think it'll be 34 at the start of the season. It's just kind of like, man. At some point, you got to move on from these guys, right? So Khalil Mack's an interesting one that you just don't love it, but okay, fine. So when they stay and, and kind of keep their contracts, then you look at some of the moves that the Bolts have been able to make. And you look at it, Hayden Hurst was another signing. So they've made a few signings. We've talked about Gus Edwards. We, we touched on a few different things. But in general, as other teams seem to be getting better, the Chargers are the same-ish. And they are going to be automatically better with Jim Harbaugh. There's just no one debates that. But it felt like this was either a time to get better or to really tear it down to the studs and build it the way you wanted to. And so with Hayden Hurst, now it makes you wonder, all right, what are they going to do with that fifth pick? Right? It was looking at Brock Bowers, all right, tight end, generational tight end type of situation. Now it's like, okay, they've got their tight ends. This is the second tight end that they signed. They signed another guy from the Seahawks, kind of the same type of guys. They're receiving tight ends, but also good blocking tight ends. Hayden Hurst, not as good of a blocking tight end, but he's been a, a good um, receiving guy. When Atlanta traded a second round pick for Hurst and a fourth, he had his best receiving stat line, 56 catches, 570 yards and six touchdowns, but his most balanced years with a balance blend of blocking and receiving was with the Ravens. Absolutely. And this guy has had an up and down career. That is the best way to say it, man. He disappears, comes back, disappears, comes back. So if you're a Chargers fan overall, it just has felt like, man, are we better? Are we the same? Like, where are we? And so really what it comes down to now is for them to trade out of number five, get more picks and knock those picks out of the park, offensive linemen, get younger they need a more they need a quantity of picks as they go forward because this free agent run that they've had has not been i don't know it's not doesn't feel good doesn't feel exciting and part of me is like it shouldn't because if it feels exciting you're probably doing it wrong you're probably overspending you're probably getting guys that are too old shouldn't be doing it but at the same time 
the Chargers are still in the same ish predicament that they've been in with kicking the can down the road with these inflated contracts. Now they did get rid of Mike Williams. So that I thought that was perfect. You have to get by right. Austin Eckler by, but they keep some of their defensive players and that's, that's okay. But it's interesting to see what will happen now as we get into the draft. So as we pull up um, the draft, let me just take a look at it. We've talked about it a few times, what a, what it would look like and we'll get right into it. Okay. So now it's, now what we're looking at is Joe Alt. Now that wouldn't be bad, right? I, I don't hate that. I also don't hate Malik Neighbors. I don't hate anybody picked here, honestly. But that's the decision that they have to make is do we go back and get more picks? Go back here and you look at somebody's going to come up for these quarterbacks and specifically J.J. McCarthy. At this point in all of this, I think teams realize that they just, you have to have a quarterback. You can make all the free agent signings and special teams, players and depth pieces and backups and DNs and corners all day long, every day. If you're not a quarterback, like what are we doing? So Jets need a quarterback eventually, right? I mean, Falcons, they have one now, but do they? The Titans, I mean, so you look at the Titans. Hey, look, Titans, we'll move up two spots because we just want to make sure we get our guy. Fine. We'll go back to seven. We'll get Joe Alt, Malik Neighbors, Turner, Quinn and Mitchell's already up here. So so I just feel like the, the Chargers are in a great spot, and, the, and that's where they really have to make this offseason something is in the draft. Free agency just kind of been a dud so far, but – Remember, because as much as we've talked about and hyped up Jim Harbaugh, absolutely, I I felt like this offseason was going to be a real reboot, and instead it's kind of like, yeah. So let me know your thoughts in the comments on this. We'd love to hear what you're thinking. Again, this is an unbiased look into your team, so maybe I'm missing it. I could totally be missing it, and you're like, no, we, this is good. We got these guys back. Bosa feels like, mm, Mac, you're old. It's like, yeah, I don't know. So it's interesting to see how each franchise is going about this and and that's the difference but at the end of the day you have a quarterback and you have a good coach and your gm we'll see i think he's good he should be good so you have a good quarterback and you have a good coach so you're fine right so you're fine but it, it just feels like the draft they have to nail the draft now that's all and i think they can do it so let me know your thoughts in the comments and we'll see all of you on the next one